Hi everybody, welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Appreciate you checking out the video. We're doing something a little bit different. We're taking the major meat from the live stream and we're putting it into a standalone video. You've asked for it, so I'm putting it out there. So tell me what you think in the comments. Today we're talking about the budget-friendly $1,000 shack. It sounds like a lot of money, but let's talk about it because I break it down and your money Ham radio stuff can be a little bit expensive, so think about that as we go forward. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Let's roll. Okay, so why are we here today? Well, I did an article not too long ago on the newsletter, which you can get through Patreon, when I was talking about no perfect ham shack. But I still tried. I still tried to put together what I thought was the best usage of your $1,000. And believe it or not, $1,000 goes pretty quick. So what the heck is that? Let's go ahead and take care of that. <laughs> um, $1,000 goes uh, by pretty quickly when you're talking about radio equipment. So the $1,000 ham shack by Hoshnasi, that would be me. It doesn't exist, guys. It, it doesn't exist. There is no $1,000 shack. Uh, but we're going to try and break this down. So instead of talking about one thing, one shack, it's more about configurations and activities that people find interesting with amateur radio. I've always said there's so many facets to this hobby. There's so many things that are interesting about this hobby. Oh, and when you fill the survey out, please fill in like, you know, if you've got a comment on how I can spruce up the, the, uh, the old live stream, that would be great. Let's do, oh, we are on the long. Okay. Can I make this a little bit bigger? Never mind. We'll leave it. The chat seems okay. You can't, you can't have it all uh, when you're starting out or you're building a shack. And so you kind of have to pick a goal and, and like go with that. So this is going to be breaking down some of those goals and then what I think is, is good products that go along with that. And one of my favorite sayings, I worry my wife will one day sell my radios for what I told her I paid for them. And that is very true. Because I realized, holy smokes, whoo. Oh man, that's barely. It was uh, that barrel aged uh, stout. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of radios, and in fact, I, I, when I was doing these slides, I I realized Alex Johnson sends a super chat. Thank you, buddy. Bailed on pattern, but wanted to say thanks instead. Oh, Patreon. No, no problem. If you don't like Patreon, I got no problem. We'll have to watch the rest later. Got my call sign yesterday. Congratulations, KJ Seven DJU. Hey, please. Um, Please go join Facebook and and post there. It is crazy the deluge of people that are getting their license right now. It's awesome. So many people are getting licensed. It's super super cool because it's all catching up, right? I said it would take about a week, week and a half, and sure enough, that Friday everybody started popping. So awesome. Um, anyway, back to the show here. There's so many aspects of this that I've got to break through or break down. So, oop. Okay. So breaking it down, we're going to mainly be talking about handhelds, mobiles, and um, base stations. And there'll probably be two of each in all these configurations. And I'll try and walk through them as best as I can. And a real high-level approach to this is handhelds are obviously handheld. Hand HT stands for handy talkie. It's like a walkie-talkie. A mobile is generally something in the class of something that would fit in a car. But that doesn't mean it has to fit in a car. That could be your base station. And in fact, a lot of people use mobiles, VHF, UHF radios at home. And that's totally fine. And then, of course, a base station is going to be like something large that actually sits on your desk. So, you know, keep that in mind. Now, the reason why I say one size does not fit all is you're looking at my beat up D72A right there. Well, when that, I think that's still available. It's $400 if you want to buy it new old stock or, or discounted or whatever. And you can get them used. And, and I'll talk about that in a little bit too, used. But it, it's not just that radio, right? That's a uh, full duplex radio, which means you can listen while you're talking like you would a cell phone. And that makes it really good for satellite operation. That's that uh, aero antenna that's sitting next to it that I have. And then I have a recorder next to that. So one, this one, call it a shack, if you will, is for operating FM satellites. And once you, once you factor all the money out there, that's almost $1,000 once you start putting it all together with the cabling and the stuff that goes along. So that's, that's $1,000 shack right there. So it's really hard to say, this is the shack you should get. This is the best thing I recommend. Dirt, dirt, dirt. 
Uh, HRCC DMR Talk Group. I know it exists. Two dollars. Oh, thank you, David. Appreciate that. Yeah, I, I always. What? It's three one six two one. Three one or is it two one six? Uh, I always do this when we go live. I always remember it, and then I totally flub because once you turn the cameras on, you forget everything. Zach will correct me or Ethan, and he'll post. Oh, you know what? Take Ethan's link that he posted. Take the link uh, to the HRCC http hrcc dot link take that link okay i was right it's three one six two one take that link and you'll get all the information for our, our talk group and hotspot so yeah so hopefully you get where my mind's at there are so many different shacks that you can configure i roll through a pretty good number here and we'll talk about them as we go so have a goal in mind just like i said have a goal earlier like getting a different you know upgrading your license or learning cw like i'm doing you should have a goal in mind when you're starting to kit out a shack is it going to be are you just going to focus on analog you're working local repeaters uh maybe aprs even though i know that's digital it's packet radio you get the idea uh digital voice modes repeaters hot spots you thinking about just talking to repeaters or are you going to do something local with a hot spot do you want to do hf is it going to be for home uh, meaning you might want a bigger antenna. Is it going to be portable, ultra portable, like soda? Um, CW, right? If it's a CW only radio, you can save a lot of money because you don't have all those uh, single sideband stuffs in it. So these are all things you should consider when you're thinking about piecing out a shack, right? So I want to say on used equipment, all the lists that you're going to see, except for the very end of the slide, I talk about the different used markets and, and what I like and what I don't like. Everything you're seeing, everything you're going to see with the price values are retail or the bet one of the some of the best prices I can find usually off of HRO. Hey, what's up, Lee? Thank you. Appreciate the support. So keep that in mind. You can drastically reduce a lot of these prices if you look for used, uh, but that comes with its own pitfalls and mines that you must avoid as you traverse the landscape. So keep that in mind. Oh, Rick Careberry, Care uh, Carberry, Careberry, getting late on the East Coast, 7 threes. Yeah, it's 10, 10, 16 over there. I understand. Take it easy, buddy. So let's start simple. Analog all the way. This would be your most traditional shack. Most traditional shack. Very easy recommendations on a lot of these. Baofeng BFF 8 HP, 62 bucks on Amazon. Yesu 450D. Uh, this is a little expensive, Seven, uh, 71995 at HRO. Uh, it has a tuner, so that's part of the reason why it's more expensive. There are non-tuner options, but that makes this kind of expensive. You're going to need a power supply, 3614 for a Pyramid, a company that makes one off of Amazon. This is a cheap power supply. This is obviously something that you could replace with a used one that's better made or just spend more and get a better better uh, power supply. And then I went with an off center fed dipole for $121 off Amazon. Again, some of these prices you can get cheaper. Um, you can get you can go different options on these. But that was just the like using the features of the radio having a tuner, knowing that it would be very good to have just a simple VHF UHF radio. Very good idea. As Zach says in the chat, the BFF 8 HP goes on sale $40 every 30-ish days. So you can keep an eye on that too. So there are better prices to be had. But at the end, for just those four things, $940.96. So that's $1,000 right there, right? So keep keep that in mind, right? Again, the internal tuner is important. Um, a better HT would be nice, you know, something that maybe gave you digital, like a 7DD, like a Yesu, or an ICOM or something like that. But right if you're trying to aim for a one thousand dollars so some alternatives here are an icom 718 62 it's 624 no tuner the alinko dx sr9t um cheaper but careful uh not a lot of good reviews or, or some bad reviews for this radio so be careful what you're looking at do reviews check things out Todabert, oh thank you he says great topic loving the channel thank you very much buddy i i really appreciate the help um yeah, so be careful. Don't just take my word for it. This is a note to remind everybody, please do reviews and, and read reviews and, and really understand what you're getting into. Shane is in the chat from HRO, my buddy. Go to HRO and go hands-on with a lot of this stuff. The guys there are not just knowledgeable, but they're extremely enthusiastic. And the 
enthusiasm over this stuff makes it so much more fun and so much easier to plop down some serious cash. So keep that in mind. The Yaesu 891, I, I put this last because I think this is a, a very, very good radio for the price, $600 a mobile. No tuner, right? So you would have to think about um, an ATOS, which is an antenna that Yesu sells that is for a mobile application. It's a screwdriver antenna. Keep in mind that you can still use a cut dipole with all of these. You can still use a tuned antenna, which is recommended um, for a first shack. There's no problem with going with a first tune, you know, just a tuned dipole, maybe even a fan dipole, right? And you can add a couple of bands to that. And those things are all homebrew, so you can save money there, right? Lots of plans online. How about a mobile shack, right? So 100 watts would be great, but costs might not make that work out. So 100 watt, whoop, where are we going? My slides are lagging. There we go. So mobile shack, if we just want to go outdoors, HF outdoors, um, QRP, look at a QRP radio or the 890, uh, 891 from before. Zaiju, mo well, we skipped one. There we go. Mobile shack. See, it's lagging. Uh, the Yesu 891, 599 at HRO. Pair that with an antenna that you can uh, physically tune, like an MFJ Big Ears, which I've previously reviewed. It's 179.95, but you got to power it, so you need a battery. I went with the $69 Dakota Lithium. You could go with the 10 amp hour, but the 7 amp hour gets you a smaller platform and it's lighter, so you can totally rock that and do well. And then I threw in a, a Radioddy GD77. So now you're dipping into the digital a little bit for $94.99. The total is still $943, though, right? So it's interesting that just swapping some things out, and it changes the whole dynamic, changes the whole dynamic of everything. So because you have no tuner again on the 891, you'll need to go with something that you can physically control or put your hands on or, or just have one that's cut and then leave it at that. Uh, David Hagen, we will talk about that D72. Don't worry, buddy. But yeah, HRO has them for $389.95. I think that's cheaper than what I have listed here. So, so good find on that if you end up wanting one of those. Some alternatives to the 891 would be the Zaiju. Uh, for me, that's what I own. It has a very nice tuner, very nice tuner, and a really nice SWR meter. And if you can do CW, you'll save a lot of money, which I will talk about shortly. Now, antenna swap outs. It's really cheap to do a tuned dipole, like a speaker wire dipole, or build your own ballon, or even buy a cheap ballon and add the legs to it to the size that you want. Mag loops, a little bit more expensive to very expensive, and then buddy pole. Buddy pole's kind of like the upgrade to the MFJ big ears, and upgrade's a relative term. I guess it's it's a little bit sturdier, but it's it's much more expensive, right? So you could swap out for all this, and you'd be going to be over a thousand dollars when you're all said all things said and done. And maybe not QRP for the first shack. That's the takeaway there. I like QRP. I like going mobile. I love soda, but QRP limited at five watts, ten watts in most cases, in some cases for something like an Elecraft. Still very difficult to make contacts, particularly now in the solar minimum. The bands aren't dead, and they'll do well on um, contest days. You'll make some contacts or just sprint days where little short contacts are going, contests are going off. And up to eight, you'll still be able to make contacts with. But it's nice to have uh, at least a barefoot 100-watt radio at your disposal when you're starting out. So just a reminder on that. I know I've talked about that before. All right, going digital. So I like HF, that's my favorite, but you know, there are other things out there too. Let's look at if you just wanted to have a digital only setup. So maybe an HT and like a mobile and the accoutrement that goes with that. So the Alluance, I believe I'm saying that right. I know someone will correct me if I'm not. HD1 on Amazon is $189.99. The Zoom Spot, uh, I believe that's RPI. I put PRI, that's wrong. $139.99 at HRO. By the way, the link for HRO for the uh, Zoom Spot is down below in the description if you want from them because they are exclusive for that radio or for that Zoom Spot. And then the Radioddy TYT MD9600 dual band radio for $279 off of Amazon. This is a new radio to me. I have not put hands on this. I mentioned warning because brand new to me, so your mileage will vary. I'm not pushing you towards that, but there are very few DMR mobiles on the market. So keep that in mind if you're looking for something DMR in a mobile platform. 
And then an MFJ 1729 mag mount, dual band, 2 meters and 70 centimeters, just 60 bucks. I recommend the signal stick. I love the signal stick for 20 bucks. And this is optional, totally optional, is a tablet of some kind that you can go portable, mobile with, that you can interface with the hotspot if you're going with a hotspot. If you're not going with a hotspot or you just don't care that much about um, switching on the fly like that, no big deal. You don't have to do that. So I gave you both prices, and, and that also was a keyboard because, um, by the way, uh, programming digital radios are extremely, extremely difficult. Oh, I got a super chat. QRP and soda for people with special needs. Hmm. Coley asked a question regarding hmm. QRP and soda for people with special needs. That is a good question and almost deserves its own video. I would probably need to know more information about um, your situation. The, the real answer to that is it's doable. Um, it's doable. The only problem is, is you can't just drive up to a summit. There are summits that you can actually drive up on, like Pikes Peak, for example. You do have to actually get out and then move yourself to the location you're going to be operating from. And there's a certain amount of distance that Soda asks you to do that. So that's a good question. Um, email me at hoshnasi at gmail.com and give me some more specifics, and, and I'll see if I can help you out or at least get you in touch with the right people. So I mentioned the tablet and the folding keyboard because programming DMR is extremely difficult without a laptop. I feel that a computer, computer or laptop, is vital to the process. So if you don't have a laptop, something that can program it, and I mean Windows laptops, specifically Windows, you're going to want that. Yes. So make sure you have something with a USB port to connect to the radio because they use their own cables and you must download and run their software. So just keep that in mind. Okay, alternatives. Um, the Anytone D868 and the B, uh, BTEC DMR. Both are kind of hot new radios that are on the market. I have not put my hands on one, but they come highly rated from our staff, the admins here in this room and on the Discord. And you don't need a mobile in the case of DMR if you're if you're not going to be driving around places or if it's not something that you're going to ded like dedicate to your car or your home, then a hand t uh, an HT is fine, particularly if you're using a Zoom spot with your home Wi-Fi or, or something along those lines. And if you have a computer again, you don't need a laptop. Okay, so what about Wires X? So this is a bit it's more expensive, but you get more capability out of it and i'm going to try to explain so the image there is an ftm 100 dr it's 300 dollars the hro it's on sale right now so you might want to pop on that and a yesu hri 200 is 124.95 at hr 24 at hro so those two kind of combine together and they are a radio and a hot spot kind of put together in one they offer more features than that, but that's its primary function. And so then you'd use something to interface with it, like an HT. In this case, I recommend a Yesu FT70DR, um, just because it's one of the more, I believe it's the most ex inexpensive Yesu um, system fusion radio that you can get. So the advantage of going with the FTM100DR and the HRI200 is that you get the full 50 watt output of the FTM100. So by putting that mag mount on it, that 1729, great thing about a mag mount, even if you're in a house, you can just slap that on something metal like a filing cabinet, a cooking, a baking sheet, a big enough baking sheet, pizza pie, you know, baking sheet, and it'll work okay. Ideally, and again, we're trying to stay under $1,000. Again, you could spend some more money here and you could get something that's permanently connected outside. The downside with that is you're going to need to have that coax run to be able to make that connection to the radio. Coax ain't cheap, particularly if you want to do the stuff with low losses. So keep that in mind. But again, it came to $904 just for that setup right there, which didn't include a computer. Oh, no, it included that cheap tablet, a very cheap tablet. And the reason for the cheap tablet, it says optional, but it's really not because you need to have a computer that's dedicated to to wires x you have to run wires x from windows using a, a windows computer so there is uh the yesu official wires x facebook group there's a guy who took an hri and he connected it 
permanently to a tablet. It's a really nice clean setup. So if you if you want to check that out, if you're interested in wires, then go look at that because he did a really good job. James Hannibal, um, I don't want to go on a, a huge tangent, says, I prefer Linux instead of Windows when operating digital modes on HF. I agree with you. But logging software, the full-featured logging software, not big on Linux. My problems there. So WiresX continued. There's not a lot of wiggle room with WiresX. Um, I, I did a video on the FT2D, the FT2DR, this guy, my, my friendly little HT that can run in HRI mode and PDN mode, personal data node mode. And it'll run wires and it will run um, with a computer. It works great. Go check that video out if you haven't. But I wouldn't leave that on all the time. I wouldn't make that a permanent on node. I wouldn't make that my wires X radio solution. So I feel like it's good for temporary situations. The lack of power, the fact that this is just a, a tiny little radio that's doing a lot of work, heavy lifting, it's, it's going to burn out eventually. It's going to go bad on you. I know Yaesu probably wouldn't say that. They stand behind their product, and, and I like it. I think it's a durable product. But I don't know that it could stand up to that over and over again. So just keep that in mind. I already mentioned the dedicated computer, dedicated radio to an HRI 200. You can't really avoid that. But when you have it all set up, it's awesome because you get 50 watts of output. And if you got a good antenna, you can do pretty well on the receive side too. So I, I, I'm, I'm surprisingly very... Um, happy with wires x i i really thought that it was kind of a cash grab in a lot of ways with the cost you know let me go back here kind of expensive particularly when you look at that first hurdle that kurt ftm 100 dr and the hri 200 but you start breaking it down it's 400 um you're in almost that much if you get a really nice dmr radio and a, and a hot spot you're almost there Hotspots provide so much more versatility but they don't have that 50 watt output Right, so you, all these like I, I'm the Zach, with the the hangover guy, the numbers, you know, flying over. That's what I was doing when I was making these slides. I'm like, man, I there's so many little things concerning cost, particularly if you want to stay within a budget, and and you have to give things up if you want to achieve what you're looking for. So again, this is if you want to achieve Wires X. So D Star, D Star, the D Star Shack, uh, Kenwood D74 in a Zoom spot. I. Name me a better, name me a more iconic duo. Um, I'll wait. I, I don't know. I I like I like the form and function of the ICOM HTs, but the D seventy four does so much. It does so much, and it is so cool. So I was like, one and done. Uh, five fifty nine at five fifty nine ninety five at HRO. Throw a zoom spot on top of that. And you're done. It's still six hundred and sixty nine dollars, though, for a radio and a hotspot. So not cheap. But again, D74 is an awesome radio. You can connect it to your computer. You can run software off of that. You can do local APRS with it uh, via its node software. Awesome. Big fan of big fan of the entire D72, D74 line, uh, the D71. But um, they are flimsy. They feel flimsy. And I kicked my D72 uh, down my driveway. It skidded 20 feet until it came to a crash at the bottom of my of my driveway. I felt horrible. Um, it didn't affect the radio. It's fine. It's just scratched up. And it has the one of the worst battery lives I've ever experienced in in all of radio um, HTs. I don't know why that battery is so bad because it does so much. Sure, but yeah. Hair of the dog asks, why not the D72? Well, you know, maybe it's going to come up in a slide or two. I got a lot of slides. I don't know what slide we're on, but I'm over. I'm easily over 30 slides on this presentation. So I hope everybody's comfortable. D70, uh, D Star Alternatives. Uh, the ICOM ID 51A is very cool. Feels really good in the hand. It has all kinds of cool features. Um, I believe this one has Bluetooth, or you can get the Bluetooth module for it. Very nice, very nice HT. Very nice. I love the colors that it comes in. I think they're doing a cool thing with with the look and the feel of them. Um, the ICOM 7100. 890, 899.95 does D-Star. Cool looking. It looks like a scanner. You, the base of it, you hide it away, and then you got this cool little desktop unit. Um, cool radio. Very cool. A little expensive, though, so I didn't include it because, again, we're aiming for $1,000 because you got to put an antenna on these things, right? And then an ICOM ID5100A, which is a uh, mobile. 
I I just put that out there to round it out for mobile options, but I, I don't know that I would recommend that one. Um, I played around with a little bit of HR. I'm, I'm not a huge fan. In fact, I think Jerry has that radio. If Jerry, I don't know if J Jerry said he might come on the chat. And I think he's swapping it out for an FTM 400. So, um, yeah, I'm not a D-Star user. It's not because I'm a hater or anything. It's just I don't really have any of their equipment. Um, I started out as a Yesu guy, so I just naturally fell into wanting to work the digital modes in Yesu that I knew. But I'll get around to D-Star. Okay. What about a satellite shack? I kind of already hinted at that earlier. My scratched up D72A. So uh, it's four hundred five dollars on Amazon, but we found it cheaper on HRO. So to go get it from there, and you can take my link down in the description. It'll be to the Zoom spot to just search for D72A, and it'll come up. So I, I want you to I want you to think about this. So this is just one aspect of the hobby: working FM satellites. You're talking about the D72A, which is probably the only radio in the game as far as FM satellites because it's full duplex. You need an antenna. Everybody, You're going to want a beam. Uh, and you got the arrow, which is dual band with a duplexer in the handle, meaning one connection. So it's like it's made for the D72. Or, yeah, D72. So between those two, that's already up over $550. You then recommended and this is kind of operating procedures you want to have something of high quality to record the audio that's coming out of the radio and also be able to record you so the zoom h1 or the handy recorders any of the zoom recorders that are around the hundred dollar mark do really well again i'll mention jerry again um jerry uses a zoom recorder on his soda activations the audio you're hearing is the Zoom recorder. It does very, very good. It's a very good recorder. So $100 to $150 right there. And then you need to convert, because of course it can't just be standard. Uh, Kenwood has a 2.5 millimeter jack to a three, and you'll need a 3.5 converter. So that's like six bucks on Amazon. You can um, actually do some work on that. There is, um, what's his name? I was not prepared to provide this link. If you search for D72A, aux cable there will be a blog that pops up and the blog will cover um how to how to make this cable work perfectly with different recorders because it can come out a little hot out of the radio so you want to make sure you avoid that and then headphones you're going to need headphones so that's 726 dollars and 32 cents just from that alone so that's a lot right keep this in mind again all of this is to just get you thinking about what it is you want to be doing, what you find interest in amateur radio, and then how you would go about doing this. So some alternatives, um, you can have an elk antenna. Elk antenna is a log periodic. It's $129.95. And you can do just a bunch of bow fangs. Um, you can use one bow fang as your transmitter, and you can use another bow fang as the receiver. Generally, people like to use two antennas, one as a receiver and one as a transmitter. But you can still just hold it sideways and listen. However, the accuracy of that's not going to be that great, and you're not going to have the best um, the best audio incoming. And then, of course, the uh, Retechus, which is a clone of the TIV DOV115, which I did a review on, the cheap little shortwave radio. That, re that records um, audio in, so use that. Things like 24 bucks. Not great quality, but, you know, keep that in mind. What time is it? We got almost a little more than 10 minutes for the giveaway, and we're only at 82 people. So, okay, so APRS. APRS is kind of features that goes along with a lot of other radios, so we'll keep that in mind. My pick, the FT2DR, $299 right now at HRO. It's on sale. And the FTM 400 XDR, which is $579 at HRO. So I uh, will have a video coming out for the FTM 400 spoiler alert i love it it's a really good radio uh, i think you can maybe find that cheaper though but that's 879 dollars right there so keep all that in your head uh juan carlos wants to be eligible for the giveaway go to the discord the link that zach posted go to the discord and go to the giveaways um chat it's going to be down towards the bottom by the live stream and then click the horn that's all you got to do. Easy. 
So APRS, what does that give you? Oh, by the way, there's there's plenty of other um, ways you can go with alternatives. You can get a D74, which is $500. You can get a D72, which I think we covered is less than 400 You can get a Kenwood D710G, which is a mobile, which is $539. Um, the Kenwood, though, if you combine that with a mobile, it's too expensive. Just those two together blows the blows the bank, our budget. So, And no antennas, right? Oh, you know what? I didn't have an antenna. Oop, I didn't include an antenna there. That's my bad. Tack on an extra 50 bucks. That's uh, $930 then around that. So we're already at $1,000 just for three items, just to do APRS. Keep that in mind. Okay, so random stuff. Uh, workbench. What about a workbench shack? What about pocket change? If you got more than $1,000, let's see if I can spend some of that money. How about a workbench shack? Let's say you wanted to, you just want to play around with electronics and you want to build your own radio. Well, I've got some suggestions. There's actually a lot of suggestions here, so hang on to your butts. Uh, the Hako soldering station, it, you can get them for different prices on Amazon, depending on what you want comboed with it, starting at about 110 bucks. So the Hako soldering station combo is 148.95 on Amazon. Uh, the Fluke 117 multimeter is 176 on Amazon. Now the Hako is is probably the best. A soldering station that you can get for the money for that price point it's a really good soldering station it's all digital fluke multimeter is really strong um you need a circuit board holder to solder all the components into the into the pcb so i threw that in 12 20 and you need a flux pen for making good connection or d soldering um, i went with the pocket pal parts checker which is 35 dollars um that's not amazon that is qrp uh, qrp me and the Hilltopper 20, which is either 20 meters or 40 meters, full kit build. I did a video on it. It is $97.90 on 4stateqrp.com, 4sqrp.com. So you get to build that with the equipment that you just got. I threw in 100 feet of 16-gauge speaker wire, $11.99. You know why. Make your own antennas. And Eternity 1300 milliamp lipo, lipo battery, which is $19.99. And a QRP Guys iambic, or iambic paddle with base for $25. So all that total is $515. And there may be some little extras that you got to buy, like Anderson Power Pole adapters and um, connect stuff like that to it. So use that. Um, that. That's a perfect way to go. All kinds of extras. In fact, what are the extras? The workbench shack alternatives, choose your own multimeter. If you own a multimeter, you don't have to buy one. Uh, I like the Hako, but you can get something else. If you can get a Weller at a good price, Wellers can get expensive. Pick your own QRP kit. If you want to do the, um, what's the one ever? What's the one all these kids are doing these days? Um, we were just talking about it. Basically, you can pick any kit you want, though, if you want to go with different things. They're more expensive, but you got money to play with because this is only $500. Uh, and then you'll need coax, connectors, cables, all that. And then, of course, don't forget your Anderson power poles. You'll need Anderson power poles. Anderson, all the things. And if money is blown, like burning a hole in your pocket, you've got to use, um, you, you want to spend it, and you're, you want to go above $1,000, and you want to just add this to your shack anyway. You already have a shack, and you're thinking about rounding it out with things you're going to need. Um, I recommend getting just simple pa power pole kits, $15.99. Uh, the Anderson Crimper is $30.99. I recommend you get the $30.99 Cripper because uh, you will get a very nice connection, very solid connection when you do um, when you do that. The Rig Expert AA55 Zoom Antenna Analyzer is $369.95. That will take you through 6 meters down to... 160 meters it won't go to two meters so keep that in mind but it has a smith chart it's color and it's bluetooth for the one that i put in uh, there which is awesome and everybody can always use an sdr so an rsp2 so you get the two antenna lag uh two antenna ports that's available at hro for 169 i still have mine set up doing um the decoding for the telemetry of airplanes which is awesome and an LDG 7 100 plus tuner. Uh, not necessarily the one I recommend, but it's the right size. Ooh, the Bid X40. Somebody got it. Ding, ding, ding. That was the other uh, QRP kit I was thinking of. The Bid X40. 
That's 134.95 at HRO. Okay, so buying used. We're going to talk about buying used now. So those are just some of my thoughts on what you can what you can do, what you can go get as far as a shack if you were looking for a specific angle, a specific focus in radio. Um, but the best way to save money is see if you can find it used. So let's talk about that. Hamfest, a uh, high value return option in some cases. There are some people that just want to get rid of stuff and you can find it for a great deal. If you know what the thing costs or you think it's cool, but you don't really know the price, ham fests. Um, sometimes things are overpriced. Sometimes things are a great deal. You got to be careful. A lot of things um, at ham fest, though, may not work, may have quality issues, may not turn on, may whatever. So I recommend that you bring tools along. The Pocket Pal 2, two the uh, small minty box that has the prongs that do all kinds of testing. It has a signal generator. It has a frequency counter. It will do an LED check. It will do a meter check if you're looking for meters. Lots of really handy functions that you can need or will need if you're trying to buy equipment at a ham shack or anywhere else for that matter. So I recommend that. Pocket Pal 2 by QRP Me, all one word. And a multimeter, of course. You should go get one of those Harbor Freight dealies, the ones that they give away for free or for five bucks, and uh, use that. It, way to go. And <laughs> every OM has a unicorn ham fest story. Everyone has a story about something that they have found. Somebody has always found something of an incredible deal at a ham fest. So keep that in mind. Uh, maybe take that with a grain of salt. You won't be missing much if you... Um, don't necessarily hit up the ham shacks, but it can be a good deal. Clubs. Clubs are great if you have a good quality cl club. You can find good quality equipment that's been taken care of and by people who know how to operate, which is oftentimes one of the harder things is that you will find really good equipment, but you don't know how to operate it. And so then you spend a bunch of time trying to figure that out versus Going over to the guy's house or lady's house uh, that knows how to operate it, sitting down with them, having them show you how to operate it, you'll learn a ton that way if you if you learn in that capacity. However, it can be older equipment, and it requires a good club. That's the biggest problem with uh, club equipment is it's only available to people that um, are in good clubs that have active uh, members. You can buy online, qrz.com, swapqth.com, eBay, and um, for this, let me switch over to the web here. So this is the QRZ.com website. If you go to Swap Meet, go to Swap Meet Hot List. Just a list of stuff. You've got a Halicrafters, an Ameritron, looks like an amp, uh, a couple of stuff, another Heath kit. A lot. This is some old stuff, usually a little bit newer than that. Oh, so there's a Ubit, Ubit X. Uh, da, 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 da. All contacts are wrapped in bubble. I'd like to get 125 shipped. So 125 shipped. And it looks like he's got some interest. Oh, I want to see what this pocket CW reader is because these things are like $80 at MFJ or uh, at HRO. 45. I'm not going to get one, but I found that interesting that those things are that expensive. Let me see if there's anything interesting right here. Icom 2730A. Oh. Okay, never mind. Okay, you get the idea. And then there's uh, Ham QTH. Oh, wait. What's going on? Oh, I was searching for amplifiers. HF radios, and then it's basically a forum post at that point. You can go through there, look at the different items, and you can see what they've got. Yeah. Oh, Drake, TR3. A Drake TR3 that I can't look at. Great. Yeah, that's not bad. 100 bucks. That's not bad at all. Woo. Hell. Don't anybody look at that. <laughs> Quick, go back to the slides. Don't show people how to get that. Um, the problem with the internet is that you got to be wary. There's no way to check the quality. There's no way to check that it's working. And if you have to return it, you just hope it works out that you can return it. Scams can and do happen often. And they're not always a great deal. Because um, as 
people have bought things at Hamfest to resell. People have gotten wise to the game. Oh, we better stop here. We're gonna we're gonna give away the Discord, give away the uh, the prize. Uh oh, why is David Kelly? David Kelly wins the QRP keychain. Very good. Uh, okay. South Dakota. Very good. Excellent. So David Carey, uh, Kelly wins. Please send me a message. I haven't sent out the keychain from the last winner. I have it. I've got it. Uh, let me pull the winner's radio right now. I will get those out this weekend. Tap into this one. Okay. I don't want to pop the key here. Okay, so you're going to get this guy, which is. Uh, this is 80 meters. So you got the 80 meter QRP keychain, which I just love that concept. 80 meter QRP keychain. <laughs> I brought my my keychain and my multiple hundred feet of wire. <laughs> very very good, very very good. Okay, let's get back to the slides. Congratulations, David. All right, <clears throat> and I have made purchases off QRZ, so I I do enjoy it. All right, yard sales. Oh, this is a, a ham facet. That's Edison. Ham radios at yard sales. Unicorn levels of rarity. Unicorn levels. Extremely difficult. Very hard. Um, E.g., you're going to go a lot of to yard sales before ham radio appears. Uh, so random ham radio appears is going to be super, super rare. Totally random what you come, come up with, but could be an amazing deal because it could be you know, a silent key whose wife really doesn't know what to do and just figures she'll just liquidate everything, just open the garage door and say, take it all. Although that's less common now because people are so internet active that people know when stuff like that happens and, and usually ham step in to help out. So, Okay, I've got two. <laughs> For those who waited this whole time to the end, I have two dubious mentions. These are radios that I didn't mention, and I want to cover them briefly and uh, say why. So the Yesu 817 and 818, uh, QRP only, which not a problem, but small battery, uh, big size for what it is, tiny screen, somewhat complicated menu. The 818 just went through some upgrades, and it's simply not worth the price. So don't buy one of these new. Um, the pros, though, is that they're good for linear satellites, and they are good value if you can find them used. So a lot of my complaints go away if you can find them at a good deal. So keep that in mind. Okay. Lastly, who what's the what's the radio that I didn't include that comes up all the time in all conversations? Can anybody take a guess in the chat? Anybody know? Comes up a lot on the Ham Radio Crash Course Facebook group. People seem to love this radio. I don't get it. But I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna wait. I'm just gonna show you. It's the 857, $799 for this radio. It's almost 10 years old. It's prone to a screen failure that has these vertical black lines that uh, mess it up. It has a very convoluted menu. Um, no dual receive, so even though you can have A and B channel communications with one channel on VHF or UHF, while the other one's on HF, it won't split. So you're basically, you basically have one radio at a time at any case. Um, so keep that in mind. It's not like dual watch where it will just flip back and forth and then whichever one is receiving on that breaks squelch or breaks some something, um, it'll split over. I, I think that people get caught up in the fact that it's an all-in-one radio. Again, I'm not saying this is a bad radio. If you have one of these, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that there are newer radios that have better dig digital signal processing, DSP, um, that is more form and function specific like the 891 which is just for hf that i think while it's a, a decent radio it's definitely stood the test of time it deserves the credit that it gets up to a point i think it's probably time to look elsewhere so i will leave it at that 
And that's my slides. So that's my, my show. So that's my talk on the $1,000 ham shack. Please tell me your thoughts, what you think, what you like, what you don't like. I'll take that too. Please post it in the comments and let me know. If you haven't already, please subscribe, hit that bell because I do stream every Friday at 7 p.m. and I try and post videos throughout the week. Love your thoughts as always. We've got a couple of things going on with Discord, Facebook. We've got a group there. It's an amazing community that help each other. It's very inclusive. The links for all of that are in the description. Please check them out and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.